In fluid mechanics, we like to introduce the concept of pressure by thinking of the force exerted by a fluid on a flat solid plate. So typically we say you have a plate and then the fluid impinges on this plate and it pushes on the plate with a certain force. The component of the force that is perpendicular to the, to the plate, this component, force perpendicular, divided by the area of the surface on the plate, uh, this is called the pressure. Um, and uh, it's a good approach, it's a good first approach to thinking about pressure in fluid. But in fluid mechanics, it turns out we have to go beyond this, we have to do better than this. Um, there are two weird things about pressure in fluid mechanics. The first weird thing is that in fluid mechanics, there is actually no solid flat plate. Uh, what we do when we talk about pressure is that we, we take this conceptual flat plate and then we conceptually shrink down its surface area until it becomes zero. And what we measure or what we quantify is the force perpendicular divided by the area as the area goes to zero. Um, and you may be thinking this is weird because the force goes to zero and the area goes to zero, to zero, but the ratio of those two properties does not. It tends toward one final value and this is um, pressure. So you may perhaps be thinking of a, of a small, infinitely small, tiny, very thin plate that you put inside the fluid and you measure the force on, on, on that. So this is a first important weird thing about pressure. Uh, the second uh, weird thing about pressure is that the pressure on this infinitely small flat plate is the same regardless of orientation. It means that once you put this infinitely small flat plate inside the fluid, when you turn it around in any direction, as long as you don't change its position, then you're always going to measure the same pressure. Um, and this is the case because the movement of the molecules inside the fluid particles, um, which explains uh, the concept of pressure, is completely disorganized. It's in all directions possible. Uh, so this is a very important concept to understand in mechanics. Um, pressure has no direction. Um, there is only at any point in space, there is only one value of pressure. It doesn't show a direction, um, it doesn't possess a direction. It is just one property value that is a scalar, just like temperature. There's only one temperature. You don't take a diff uh, direction of temperature. Um, and so the key concept I would like you to remember about pressure is this. In a fluid, at any point inside the fluid, there is only one pressure at a given point. Yes. Um, pressure can vary in space and time. In fact, usually when it doesn't, it, nothing is happening. It's not an interesting flow. Um, so pressure is a function of space and time, x, y, z, and t. Yes. But um, it doesn't have a direction, which means that any x, y, z, t, you will find only one value of pressure. Yeah? It's a scalar property field. Um, so perhaps um, to put it differently, if I told you I stored uh, the information about pressure inside this room uh, on a USB key, one of those very annoying uh, USB keys that are so small that you lose them all the time, um, and you would open this, this file with the stored information about pressure, what you would get in there is a big table with coordinates x, y, z, and then the, um, at each x, y, z, you would find one value in Pascal's of local pressure. And this table, you would find it many times uh, according to time. So one table for every time step. Um, but it's a very important notion to understand that for, x, for each x, y, z position, you would have only one value of pressure. 